Hello, and welcome to Great.com Talks With. Today, we're talking with Virginia DeBerry, the founder of New Brunswick Jazz Project, a nonprofit organization dedicated to presenting world-class jazz performances in downtown New Brunswick and other central Jersey locations. And if you're new to our podcast, please press subscribe button either on YouTube or your podcast app, because today we're going to learn about why the city of New Brunswick has become a destination for jazz in central New Jersey, United States of America. Hello, Virginia. Welcome to Great.com Talks. We're very excited to have Thank you. Thank you, Kareem. I'm happy to be here. Awesome. How would you describe New Brunswick Jazz Project to someone who is not familiar with your work? We are a group of three friends. I'm actually one of three co-founders who decided that we wanted to have more live music in New Brunswick for everybody. New Brunswick is a college town. It's the home of Rutgers University. And there was a lot of music for college students, but there was not a lot of jazz. And we wanted to make it available and accessible to people who didn't necessarily have the means. You know, New York is only an hour away from here. Philadelphia is only an hour away from here. And they both have good jazz scenes, but they're very costly. Mm -hmm. You know, a night out at a jazz club in New York City for two people to go from here to there with transportation, tolls, parking, cover charges minimum is easily three, four hundred dollars. Mm-hmm. And everybody can't afford that. And so we wanted to make jazz available and accessible to everybody, not just people with deep pockets. Mm-hmm. Wonderful. Um, having uh, Providing a choice uh, for the resident of New Brunswick for something different rather than just a college music and something right. very classical, something very meaningful, as well as very affordable option rather than spending time and uh, money resources going to Philadelphia and New, and New York. That's incredible. Yeah, it's a way to support our local community. New Brunswick has has always had great a great theater scene. Um, two of the theaters in New Brunswick have won regional Tony Awards. And we have fantastic restaurants, uh, which, of course, mostly have been struggling during this past year with COVID. But with their art galleries, there are all kinds of things that were happening in New Brunswick. But if you wanted to go out to dinner and then afterwards go and hear some music, there was really no opportunity for that. And we decided that we would try and see if we could make it happen. So in April of 2010, actually, it's like 11 years ago last week that we did our first event. And we started out presenting in an Ethiopian restaurant Mm -hmm. twice a month. And in the beginning, nobody was there. It would be the three of us, the band the people who worked in the restaurant, the people who were there having dinner, but nobody was coming for the music. The music would be so wonderful. At the end of the night, we would hug each other and say, we'll be back in two weeks. And by four months in, we were doing it once a week instead of twice a month. Mm -hmm. And now we do multiple nights a week, 52 weeks a year. Wow, your schedule must be packed with all the it is. <laughs> it is pretty packed. Um, we have a great availability of musicians, which is really wonderful. Um, so many of the New York City musicians actually live in New Jersey. Mm-hmm. And it's, it's easy for them to decide that they'll just go south on the turnpike or the parkway instead of north to New York. So we have. Um, and especially in, the, in this past year when musicians didn't have work because all the clubs and restaurants were closed everywhere. Um, our central venue where we present most of our jazz, it's a place called Tavern on George. And they were able to support us by um, putting a stage on the street. They actually set, set up the restaurant on the street. And all spring and summer last year, we had tables and umbrellas on the street and a stage and people would come to hear the music. And then when the winter came, they put up a huge tent with heaters in it. So we have 
we have continued to present music throughout the pandemic. And it's been wonderful for our community. They, they said, you know, you give us something to look forward to every, every Thursday and every Sunday. Mm-hmm. And it's, it's been, you know, music, they've always said, is healing. And we have really tried our best to give people something to make them happy during the time when there really wasn't a whole lot to do. So the pandemic has been a terrible burden on everyone, but it's been really good for us and in our community. Mm-hmm. You mentioned that the New Brunswick uh, is the hub for a lot of artists, for a lot of uh, theater performers, as well as because of the location, it's uh, for the musicians of the jazz musicians that are living and working uh, working in New York or are living in New Jersey. And the fact that you were able to support the community and community was also able to support you by providing venues for performances, whether uh, it was pandemic or not, it's wonderful. It, it's The jazz is bringing the community together. <laughs> it really, it really is. And we have, um, you know, all of the conversations now is about diversity, equity, and inclusion. And we we really believe that we have one of the most diverse audiences in any cultural offering. We have young people. Um, There are many colleges in the area that have jazz programs. And every Sunday, we give students an opportunity to perform. So we have young people who are involved. We have people who come and bring their children and their grandchildren. So we have people from 10 to 90. We have every race. We have people who are a CEO of a company and this a janitor who works at the company. It, it crosses all of the cultural, economic um, lines that usually divide us. In ways, the Jazz Project has actually brought people together. Mm -hmm. We've had five marriages from people who met at the Jazz Project or had their first date at the Jazz Project. Uh, Countless, not quite marriages, but other relationships that form. We have people who have made new friends that they now see every week. It's been... It's been a gift to the community and the community has been what they have done to support us has been a gift back to us. Mm, That's wonderful and very inspiring. The fact that jazz doesn't uh, know any gender, any religion, any race, uh, it doesn't see a difference between being wealthy or being uh, from a low income. So it brings, you mentioned, it brings everyone together. You know, they call it the democracy of jazz. And it it really, truly is. And our our events show that. Wonderful. For someone who is not familiar with the the style of jazz, can you please explain us what is jazz and why is it so unique and different from other music styles? Jazz is the first and only original gift to the world, to culture, that came from America. Mm -hmm. Um, it, it was invented here and it's now popular, you know, worldwide, but jazz started here as an evolution from Negro spirituals, gospel music, and the blues all kind of came together at the turn of the century, uh, at the beginning of the 1900s and jazz sort of started with ragtime and stride and, It continued to evolve over time into swing and bebop and hard bop. And there are many, many different segments of jazz. And people will say, I don't like jazz. And it's probably because they've heard uh, some cool jazz or some acid jazz. There's some stuff that's way on one end of the the musical spectrum where the sound isn't necessarily melodic. It's... It's just different. And people will hear that and think, I I don't like that. But then they'll hear something else. I didn't know that was jazz. And if you, so many of the jazz standards are from the Great American Songbook. They're songs from Broadway shows. They're they're songs that you've heard your whole life. They just have been, they're just being performed in a way that 
follows the basic melody, which is what jazz does. But then each musician in the group has the opportunity to improvise, to take it wherever they feel the music is going. And it's astonishing to watch how well the musicians work together because mm-hmm. it really is about listening and paying attention to what the people with you are doing because you don't really know what's going to happen next, but you have to be prepared to interject your own, um, your own interpretation, your own impression of where you feel you want the song to go next. And it's that it's improvisation that makes jazz so special. Mm-hmm. Wow. When you think about classical music, Europe comes to mind. But when you think yes. about jazz, it's definitely United States of America. America, yeah. the heart of the jazz comes from... It is here. our classical music, yes. And, you know, people, there are people who think that jazz is never written down. It is. There are, you know, there, there are um, scores, sheet music for many songs. Some of it is, is written after the music is played because it, the music happens as it happens. And jazz is a thing that is never the same twice. The same song played by the same band comprised of the same instruments will sound different, slightly different every time it's played. As opposed to European classical music, which must be played note for note for note. And there are... Some musicians who are, um, you know, there's some musical compositions where the, the violin solo is the, the peak of the performance or where it is the tuba solo that, that gets you all, you know, nervous and excited about something. And in jazz, every musician gets a chance for a solo. Mm-hmm. And where they take that is, like I said, it is completely improvisational. And it's, Just watching musicians, sometimes musicians have never met each other and they end up on a bandstand and they can all play the same song. It's, it's, it's miraculous the way that it works. Wow. The fact that uh, jazz in jazz, you can shine a solo as well as it's a great um, medium, a platform for team building a team and having yes. a team relationship. That's something uh, very unique. When we think about Im- uh, improvisation, we think about rap or other things, but the heart of improvisation, if we look into the history, it comes from jazz, right? You mentioned every uh, performance. We don't know that what's going to happen next because it's up to a performer. It's up to an artist to do based on what they feel and based on how the vibe is going. So that's something unique about jazz that many people should familiarize themselves more and give, pay attention to it because some, it's something unique. It's something different and it's something that brings meaning as you mentioned earlier. It really does. And it, it also allows you to, Um, interpret your own meaning, you know, because you bring your own energy and your own feelings and how what's on your mind that day allows you to hear a piece of music in a particular way that that you might not react to the same way the next time you hear it. Mm-hmm. Wow. Yeah, it's uh, creating a personalized experience based on what you're feeling. However, connecting it with what is being played in front of you, that's something, yes. uh, um, that's something creative, I would say, uh, allowing a, a listener to be a part of this creative process, which is uh, incredible. Yep, and it's, it's um, jazz is like a living organism. Because it is growing and changing all of the time. It is not like like we are, like humans. We we grow, we change, uh, we change our hair, we, you know, you grow a mustache, you shave it off, you dye your hair, you change your shirt. And jazz is very much the same way. Mm-hmm. Grows mm-hmm. and changes constantly. Indeed. Earlier, uh, you mentioned that uh, because the New Brunswick um, is mainly college time, there wasn't a ven- uh, there wasn't much um, space for uh, for jazz. There wasn't many jazz app options. Is jazz popular among young people now? It is more popular than a lot of people would believe. 
Uh, yes, it is popular among young people. And there are some clubs in New York that I used to go to regularly pre-pandemic where I would say 90% of the audience was under 35. Mm-hmm. Oh. So there, there, you know, the, the rumors of the death of jazz have been greatly exaggerated. There are, a, and there are a lot of really young extraordinarily talented musicians who are learning this music and learning about this music and working with the masters that we still have with us. Mm, wonderful. That's something I didn't know about that you mentioned uh, in, in in a particular location that you went, 90% are people under the age of 35, meaning that there is a demand uh, for jazz. And, and you mentioned that jazz is like a living organism and it's constantly changing. And it's changing also with the flow of a uh, new generation of uh, musicians yes. coming uh, into uh, the scene. How is the jazz of today is different from a jazz that was um, originally invented uh, a century ago? I think that... There, there are so many ways that it's different and so many ways that it's the same. Mm-hmm. Um, I think that the differences come from musicians being able to push themselves further and further along pre-established boundary lines. Um, and musicians like John Coltrane and Miles Davis are, are examples from people in the past who, who did that, who took um, music and pushed it further than it had ever been pushed before. And musicians are still doing that. They are taking a song and reworking it and reinterpreting it. And I think that that is part of the the reason that the music keeps changing and growing. And um, in ways it is exactly the same because the, the time signatures are the same and um, the instruments are the same. You know, there, there aren't any, there are new ways they make basses and um, cellos look, you know, they're, they're, they look like modern art as opposed to some of the old traditional ways, but generally the instruments are exactly the same. And there are only, you know, I forget what it is like, whatever the number of notes are, you're still working with those same notes. Mm-hmm. But um, I think just, just the way the, the world has grown and evolved and the way that we see things the same and differently as human beings going through our regular lives also affects the way um, the music is played and heard and remembered. Mm-hmm. Wow. So we as humans... Um evolute and we develop and the same things happens with the jazz but at the heart of it the core values the core standards um remain the same and that's yes. something to look up to being able to have a glance of moment that you are um feeling that you are in uh, 1920s, but at the same time, you're feeling in your 2020 when uh, listening to the jazz. That's something uh, very um, extraordinary to feel and to be a part of. It really is. It really is something that is extraordinary. And when my partners and I started this, we had, <clears throat> we had no idea. Mm-hmm. We thought we're going to try this. We're going to try it for one year. No matter what, we are going to try this for a year because we know that word of mouth takes a while to catch on. This is, you know, in the very early, early days of Facebook, Instagram didn't exist. TikTok didn't exist. The way you could get the word out was mostly by word of mouth. And so we said, we're going to do this for a year. No matter how many people show up, we're going to do it. And... Because we really believe that if we kept doing it, people would hear about it and they would start to show up. And we have always been, we call ourselves itinerant jazz producers because we use existing venues. Mm -hmm. We will use a restaurant on a Wednesday or a Thursday when it's not busy, busy. And it brings in new clientele for them. And it, it has allowed us to exist without the overhead of being a jazz club. You know, we're a volunt- 
monetary not-for-profit organization, and we operate on a shoestring. Mm -hmm. 90% of our budget goes to paying musicians. Mm -hmm. And that has always been uh, really, really important to us. So not to have the overhead of a, there have been three jazz clubs in New Jersey that have closed over the, the 11 years that we have been doing this. Because if you're not in New York City, where you have pre-pandemic, hundreds of thousands of travelers and visitors who are coming to the city, as well as millions of people who live there, it's very hard to sustain a venue that is just for this particular music and to be open seven days a week or six days a week and support a staff and insurance and all of that. It's really hard to do outside of the city. So we knew that people said, well, wouldn't you like to have your own place? Wouldn't you like to have your own building? Wouldn't you like to say, mm, we don't really think so. We, we, we like doing it the way that we are doing it because it provides new customers for the restaurant. And it's, it's a real kind of community spirited collaboration. And in the same way that the music is collaborative, our presenting in town has been very collaborative. We have had great support from our community over these last 11 years. Wonderful. Starting as a project of three close friends, three partners, now growing and uh, having... Uh, Who had no have music experience. <laughs> you know, we, you know, I... I'm a, I'm a writer. Uh, one of my other partners has a manufacturing company. My, uh, one of my other partners works for the city of New Brunswick, but he used to be a commodities trader on Wall Street. This was not our background at all. But we thought, we're smart enough to figure out how to make this work. If anybody can do this, we can do it. And we are still best friends. We all had brunch together yesterday. Um, we still love what we do. Mm -hmm. And, you know, when you're, when you're spending 40, 50 hours a week doing something as a volunteer, you have to love it. <laughs> well, I can sense the love in your voice and in your attitude. And um, you have done, you and your partners have done an incredible uh, job in popularizing uh, jazz in New Brunswick, as well as in central uh, New Jersey and bringing community together through the music, through the jazz. And I applaud you for your work. If someone would like to support New Brunswick Jazz Project, how can they do that? They can visit our website, nbjp.org, and there's a little link that says support us. Mm -hmm. Wonderful. The link to the website of New Brunswick Jazz Project uh, will be provided in the link in the description. So you can uh, learn about more about uh, this wonderful project and about jazz and about how the city of New Brunswick has become the hub for jazz music. Thank you so much, Virginia. It was great to get to know you and a wonderful work that you are doing in the community of New Brunswick. Thank you, Kareem. For you listening, if you enjoyed this conversation, please press like and share button because this will show the YouTube and post podcast algorithm that this conversation is important, that music can bring communities together, especially jazz music. Thank you so much and see you in the next episode.